Hello, my name's Matthew Powell, and welcome to a February's freezing cold day. I'm absolutely freezing. We're at the Horns Fishery today in Slitting Mill, Staffordshire, just outside the Cannock. And we're doing a sort of catch what you can, really. It's, um, it's been absolutely freezing. The lake, this lake last week was frozen. So we're just trying to catch what we can. Um, feeding a few micros, fishing an expander on the hook. And we're just catching what we can. We've had a few skimmers. There is F1s and carp in here. And yeah, it's just basically rock bottom fishing. The water temperature is, I've got a water temperature gauge. It's just over five degrees. So that tells you everything you need to know. It's really cold, bitterly cold. So we've just got to take our time and see what we can catch. Winter time. It's absolutely awful, really hard fishing, and your rig and your balance and your tackle has to be balanced. It's one of the main things that you're gonna catch fish on, so it, your rig has to be balanced. I've got one of our Ghost Power Light kits on. I like a Power Light kit because the water's quite clear. Although we're fishing in like six foot of water, you know, sometimes the fish can be half depth and following bait down. So I just think a grey top sometimes just masks a silhouette over the water. I'm using a six to nine dual core elastic, really soft. It's gonna be nice and forgiving when I hook a fish. And when you're getting that fish out of your peg, you're not gonna bump a fish. That's really important. Nice little pot on the end of the pole, an inch away from the pot, from the end of your pole. Perfect. Running down to a small Maver Dacron, the smallest size we do. Rig main line is 014 Rig Mono MVR to a Series 4 signature float in a 0.5. It's a wire stem float with a really thin fibre bristle. That's important. So I like a fibre bristle this time of year because it's really sensitive. You're going to pick up all them little indications and little bites that you're going to have through the day. Shotting pattern on this, I've just got a little tiny spread bulk of number 10s, a little kicker shot about an inch away from that, and then four inch inch intervals, I've got three droppers, all number 10s, to a six inch hook link of MVR hook length mono, to a size 18 F1 finesse hook from Maver. That's how simple the rig is. Let's get in there and see if we can catch another one. Definitely today I found that expander pellets are working better than maggots. Either a two mil or a four mil. Um, four mil, it's taken a little bit more time for the bite to develop and to get a bite. But when I do get a bite, it seems to be a better stamp fish. Um, we've had a few skimmers now and they all seem to be coming from a, a decent sized expander pellet on the four mil. I'm just using the bait tech expand expanders in two mil and four mil. They're absolutely perfect, nice and rubbery. They're gonna stay on the hook. You're gonna have a few nice little strikes off them and they stay on the hook really well. How I hook the expanders is, I basically put the point into the side of the expander and roll the expander onto the hook. So there's a nice little, oh, there you go, look, there's one now. So I basically just put the expander on the hook, the pointed expander on the barrel of the, of the hook, and then roll it round the bend. Uh, just, just take your time with them. That's six to nine dual cores doing all the, the work there, as you can see. Just take your time, find your roller. Oh, yeah. 
nice, nice skimmer this one. Just take your time, no rush. And there you go. That's another quality fish on a four mil expander. Perfectly in the top lip. Let's get him back in and... So we'll repeat the process. In through the side of the pellet, roll the pellet onto the shank of the hook. You've got a little tiny pellet there now, like that. What I'm gonna do this time, I'm just gonna put six, six micros in. Cap it off with a bit of crushed F1 from Bait Tech. Take your time shipping out. You don't want to be uh, depositing bait all over your peg, so just take your time. Get you to your desired length. Pop your rig in. And literally, I'm just going to turn my cup over, dunk it under the water, and then it comes out in a nice little, nice little column. Then, there you go, that's it. Hold my float out the water, so it's all straight. Just gently lower it down to the fish, and then you're away, you're fishing. And now all we've got to do is just wait for a bite or a little indication. There you go. So we just hooked another one. And the expander again. It's important this time of year just to take your time. Don't rush. Make every fish count. At the end of the day, you've, 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 you've got to wait sometimes quite a lot to, to get a fish in. So just take your time. There's no rush. And there we go. That's another nice little skimmer in the net. Not the biggest one we've had, but on a cold winter's day, it's much welcome. There we go. So we'll repeat the process, exactly the same as last time. Put a pellet on, four mil expanding pellet from Baity Tech. I'm not gonna feed this time. I don't wanna to introduce too much bait because we're catching skimmers. Uh, and I've had, we've obviously had a hybrid as well. I don't wanna put loads of bait on the heads. I just wanna catch what I can. Um, definitely if we have another fish this time, I'll be looking to put a little bit of bait in. But I find if you keep putting loads of bait in at skimmers, especially pellets, they just back off and they become really weird and funny and the bites you get are really negative. So the last thing you want to do is keep piling the bait in. Just keep, keep the bait trickling in. Catch two or three fish. If it goes a bit quiet or you haven't had a bite for a little bit, just put a little bit of bait in but the best tip I can give you is just don't go mad with your bait definitely just go sparingly rather than putting loads and loads of bait in because it'll just ruin your peg and there we go there you go you've just seen that bite literally absolutely nothing on the float a little tiny dip that's all we had. Good little tip back for winter. If you, even if you see a little tiny wobble on your float, this is a, this seems to be a better fish. This one, uh, even like a little, little wobbles, little indications. Oh, they are a little, little F1 look. Little tiny little wobbles, little indications. Oh, he's nice. Little tiny indications. Just have a quick look. Oh, look at him. He's beautiful. He is. Oh, like a little bar of gold, look. At 18, look, oh, absolutely stunning fish. Beautiful little stocky. Yeah, so as you could see with the bite, it was literally nothing. I've just lifted and it was on. Right, repeat the process again.
Today, as you can see, I'm using the Super Lithium pole. This is my go-to pole. I absolutely love it. It's probably one of the best poles I've ever owned. Um, I'm using one of our Ghost Power Tops and a Short 4. The reason for the Short 4 is it stiffens up the pole. So this time of year, when you're, you know, you've got your float dotted down and you're getting little tiny bites and you just want to lift your pole, it makes it really responsive. So literally all I've got to do is lift a tiny bit at the back end of the pole and that tip, that tip will just rise six inches. It's absolutely brilliant pole. Really nice, really responsive, really light actually. We're fishing at 14 and a half metres and it's really light. Um, I was surprised when I first had it how light it is. I just absolutely love it. It's a brilliant pole. If you're in the market for a pole, definitely pick this up and have a look. Just gonna quickly talk to you about accuracy in the winter. So I told you before that I'm fishing 14 and a half meters and I wanna know 100%, oh, just as the wind gets up there. There we are, just battling that wind a little bit. While the wind's here, we'll just talk quickly how to present your, present your rig properly when the wind's here. So obviously there's a wind from left to right and I'm fishing to my right hand side. So the best tip I can give you is, is keep your pole into you. So keep your pole locked into your body. You've got to have quite a lot of core strength to keep the pole nice and still. Keep the pole locked into your body and literally all you've got to do then is lift. You don't have to strike, you literally just lift. Um, another massive thing as well on your rig is to incorporate back shots. What this, what this will do is, is it will keep your float still and nice and stable in the water. So when, when the wind's coming through, it's hitting your line, the back shots won't push the float out of line. It'll keep it nice and steady, nice and stable. And then it'll keep it there waiting for a bite. I'll go back to accuracy in winter. So I already stated before I was fishing 14 and a half meters today. You've got to be accurate in winter. There's no point putting bait here, there and everywhere. You need to pick two or three swims, three swims maximum. I've picked two swims today, but this one to my right definitely seems to be the best line. So what I've done is I've, I've lined myself up with a far bank marker. So I'm fishing into dark water, as you can see. And on the far bank, you need to pick something that isn't gonna move that's gonna stay there all day so you can mark yourself up to. So in front of me, there's a big tree and I'm fishing to the left-hand side of the, of the tree trunk. And I'm feeding there. I'm keeping everything over my bait. I'm keeping that pellet on top of my little piles of bait that I'm putting in. And as you can see, it's all lined up. I'm just sitting there now waiting for a bite. I'm controlling my rig. When and when the winds come in. The wind's getting up a little bit there now, so just control that rig. There you go. Just had a quick five minutes on my line straight in front of me. I haven't had a bite. So what I'm going to do now, about five, ten minutes ago, I fed that with six or seven micros and just cooked it with some loose ground bait, fed it gone on to me other swims so hopefully there'll be a few fish there now settled again so we'll repeat the process hook our expander on and we'll ship out and give it a quick go definitely what I'm looking for is to go in here and have a really quick bite that's been like sort of some of the day really I've been feeding a little a little pile of bait putting my rig over that bait, line it up with my far bank marker. And it's not been taking long to have a bite really. Decent skimmers. I've had one hybrid and one little F1. So I've lined it all up. It's in line with my marker. And 
and now we're just waiting for a bite. So it just proves giving that line a quick rest has just brought on a couple more bites. And we're into another fish again. This could be a, a little F1, this one. Yeah, yeah, it could be a little F1, this one, hopefully. Yeah, a little tiny F1, look. Brilliant. Oh, look at that. Look at him. Nice little bar of gold, look. Hooked in the lip, top lip. Oh, okay. Beautiful little fish this time of year. Lovely bar of gold. Let's get him back. With the light fading, we're going to call this fish the last one of the day. Just going to have a quick recap. So, for four hours, we never even had a bite, not even an indication, a bite, a liner, anything. And then all of a sudden, one of the lines has just switched on. So, it's important for winter, so just, just take your time. Don't overcook your peg. Make sure you get every fish in that you hook and don't give up. That's the massive, massive thing to take away from today. Don't give up. I haven't given up. Just literally just been putting a few pellets in here and there. A little bit of crushed expander, the F1 bait tech crushed expander. And we've, we've just started catching a few F1s. Oh, look at him to end on. Oh. He's a lovely one to end on. So I think with that, we'll wrap it up. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little winter's fishing. Oh, look at him. He's even got his dorsal fin up for us, look. We'll wrap this one up and I'll see you in the spring. I hope you've enjoyed it. And thanks again, I'll see you soon.